There you go. There you go. All right, wait. I got to adjust a little bit. Hold on. I gotta get this right. This is, oh my goodness. Like I had it the other day. Hold on. Okay. Okay. Good morning, Miss Mahalia. We got a different cover page. I wasn't sure if that was you. I was like, who will be? All right. All right. Let me get going here. Okay. Good morning, everybody. Uh, I pray the blessings of God over you today. I pray that no matter where you are, and no matter what you're going through, that you um, become more and more aware that you can overcome. I'm still adjusting, y'all. Hold on. Um, whoa, that's different. Mm, that you become more and more aware that you can overcome. Okay, God, I thank you for your sound mind. I thank you, God, because you have enabled us to do all things through you. God, I plead the blood of Jesus over every person that will come into the classroom and that will look from afar off. God, I thank you for all of the students here. Holy Spirit, I thank you because I'm a student, okay? I am a student. I'm Holy Spirit student. Also, it said in James 1 and 5, if any man lacks wisdom... To let them ask of God who gives liberally to everyone, but we must ask in faith with nothing with, with without reproach, so we can ask you for your wisdom and you won't reprove us. You're not angry that we ask you for your wisdom. So, Holy Spirit, we need your wisdom. God, we need your wisdom. We need your wisdom to live a prudent life. We need your wisdom to live a life full of integrity. We need your wisdom to walk in the way that's pleasing to you because holiness is still right. You need to put in the caption and put in your notes, regardless to the popular opinion that's going on in the earth, holiness is still right. And the word of God says that without holiness, no one will see the Lord. So we cannot get that twisted. Holiness is still right. God is still expecting us to be holy, not perfect, but holy. Holy is to live as righteously as we know how. God, I thank you because you're teaching us and you're showing us what holiness really is and what it's really like to live a holy life that's separated from the influence and from the toxicity of the world that we can live as sons and daughters of God. Take a deep breath right there. And we do not have to allow the influences, the toxicity, the garbage of the world to contaminate our heart, to contaminate our fruit. We have a right to bear good fruit. And we thank you, God. We thank you for this week's teaching. We thank you, God, for however long you want uh, me to go through this, for me to, to walk through this with my brothers and sisters, because we're going to overcome, because you said that we could in Luke 10 and 19, that you've given us the power and the authority to trample over serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. So, and nothing shall in any wise harm us. So we plead the blood of Jesus around our minds, around our hearts. We plead the blood of Jesus over our emotions, over our emotional, our soulical self, our mind, our will, and our emotions. We submit it to you, God. 
so that we can be pleasing in your sight and acceptable so that by our mannerism, good morning, Brother Andrew, down on YouTube, that we can live holy. And we just thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen, 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 amen. All right, I think I'm going to have to, I'm going to just get moving into the teaching. I know I feel Holy Spirit want me to change the music, but I'm just going to let him um, lead me. I'm trying to, let me think, because you know what? You know what? Uh, you can't you can't tiptoe around Jezebel. That it's a serious principality. It's a serious demon, and you can't tiptoe around it. Okay, it's very serious. And I'm trying to let's see, find the worship that I'm going to need. can't be overcoming. Let's see. Okay, that's good. Okay, this is some warfare music I found off of YouTube. It's called Lion of Judah. I just need something warfare. Sometimes there, there's a time for that sound mind music, which is good. But then there's a season when you are going to need to go into a warfare position. OK, you're going to need to go into a warfare position. So this teaching this week is going to be a little bit different, a little bit more serious because Jezebel is serious. And everything. Can you say everything? Every single thing that we are experiencing in this hyper sexualized society has everything to do with Jezebel. As a matter of fact, there is a little card that I have and it's by uh, Johnny Enlow. Johnny Enlow. Okay. Johnny Enlow. He uh, has really, God has really begun to, to talk to him years and years ago about the seven mountain prophecy or the seven mountains of influence in the earth. Okay. This is exciting. Okay. The seven mountains of influence in the earth. There are seven mountains or seven sectors in the earth that is ruling in the earth system. Okay. I don't know if you guys have ever heard that before. Let me know if you've ever heard about the seven mountain prophecy or the seven mountains of influence in the earth. Let me know. Just raise your hand. Oh, this might be the first time you've never heard of it before. But Johnny Enlow is a book that uh, a seven mountain prophecy. You can look them up on YouTube also. Okay. It will absolutely give you so much wisdom and insight. Okay. Wisdom, insight, and excitement to find out what the seven mountains are of influence in the world is and this is this is worldwide okay and because it's worldwide it affects all of us so we in the body of Christ we have to come into God's agreement when it comes to uh gaining wisdom and being knowledgeable okay about the spiritual things that are going on so many people are uh, upheaval. Good morning, Miss Erica. People are uh, in an uproar in their minds, in their hearts, in their money. A lot of stuff is happening in the earth. And this is it. Unless we are aware, information brings you peace. Did you hear that? Information brings you peace. When you have no information, you go off of speculation. Speculation births chaos. Information brings you peace. Speculation births chaos. Information brings you peace. Speculation births chaos. God wants to inform us. Okay? 
God wants to inform us. God does not want us to be ignorant. God doesn't want us to be ignorant about the enemy's devices at all. That's why he's not tripping. That's why those of us who are in the word, who are in the God material ain't tripping. Why? Because he said everything that was going to happen and we don't have to speculate. We're full of the wisdom of God. We're learning about the wisdom of God. Anyway, let me get on to this because this this really, I mean, I, I'm excitable anyway. But when I start talking about the seven mountains prophecies and the seven mountains of influence and how Jezebel is in the mountain and why our societies are so hypersexual on a level that we have never dreamed. And listen, not only that, it is governmentally acceptable. Somebody should be going to jail for the child abuse that's being perpetrated against our children. But guess what? Nobody's going to jail. Why? Because the principality called Jezebel is in office. I'm going to say it again. <laughs> is anybody else excited or is it just me? <laughs> Has anybody else been wondering why people are not going to jail for the things that we've been seeing that's called child abuse? So listen, on this little card chart that I have, and you can, it's just paper that I printed it on. Listen, there are seven mountains of influence. I'm going to go through these mountains, okay? Okay. And you can write these down and look up the book. Okay, here we go. Mountain number one is media. Media has to do with the news. I'm not going to go through all of the little details, but I'm, I'm going to teach on this one day. But you can find the videos on YouTube under Johnny N. Law, Seven Mountains Prophecy. Yep, number one is media. Number two is government. Media is a mountain. Government is a mountain. Okay. Let me make sure my ink pen is working. Okay. Number three, education is a mountain. Number four, economy or money, economy is a mountain. The mountain of economy, the mountain where the money is. Oh, this is so good. Number five, celebration is a mountain. Number five, celebration is a mountain. Number six, religion is a mountain. At the mountain of religion. And number seven, family is a mountain. We have the mountain of family. Let me see if I can get this scripture here. And I'll show you how that's backed up. So again, you have media, government, education, economy, celebration, religion and family okay all right now listen go over to back this scripture to back up the seven mountains go over to matthew chapter number four okay matthew chapter number four let me write this down Matthew 4, verses 8 and 9, okay? You guys got that? Matthew 4, verses 8 and 9. Thank you, Brother Andrew. I see you. you, you got, all right, I see you up there. Okay, listen. Listen to this. This is when Jesus was driven into the wilderness 
by the Holy Spirit. He was led into the wilderness by the Holy Spirit to be tempted by the devil. Now, listen, this is the last part of the temptation here. Okay, listen. Verse number eight. Amplified Classic Version. Again, the devil took him up on a very high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms. The seven mountains are the seven kingdoms that he's talking about here. Did somebody just get excited other than me? These are the mountains that the enemy was talking about. These are the kingdoms he was talking about. All right. It says, again, the devil took him up on a very high mountain and showed him all of the kingdoms of the world and the glory, the splendor, magnificent preeminence and excellence of them. Verse number nine. And he said to him, these things all taken together, I will give you if you prostrate yourself before me and do homage and worship me. Verse 10, then Jesus said to him, be gone, Satan. For it is written, you shall worship the Lord your God and him alone shall you serve. The kingdoms of this earth, the kingdoms that the enemy showed Jesus was the seven mountains of influence that he had given reign. He had been given reign over because of the sin, the fall of Adam and Eve. When Adam and Eve fell, they gave the keys, they gave the right to the kingdoms of this earth to the devil. And guess what? When Jesus died on the cross, he took the keys of the authority back and he's given it to us. But we have to, on purpose, occupy those areas or those kingdoms in the earth. Okay. Does that make sense? Does that make sense? Does that make sense? So this backs up the word of God backs up this, that this, the kingdoms, because I don't know if anybody else wonder, he took them up into a high mountain. Then he showed them all of the kingdoms. What was the kingdoms? The seven mountains of influence. Now get this. Let's get on into Jesse. Okay. Now. Jezebel reigns on the mountain of celebration. When I explain some of this, it's going to make so much sense. Okay. As a matter of fact, she, uh, she reigns on, or that spirit reign. Remember now spirits in the word of God are are characterized by male or female traits, but they're not male or female, okay? They're spirits, but when they're named after a particular person, that embody that spirit. Does that make sense? So Jezebel, the queen, all right, let me say something here. Jezebel, the queen of Israel, Ahab was the king. She was the queen. Embodied the spirit of Jezebel. I don't know why everybody excited and all in all about the queen over in England died. I'm sorry. Family loved her. But just because she was a queen, that don't mean she was righteous. Mahalia, could you help me out here? Just because she was a queen, that don't mean she was righteous. People are enamored with the imagination. Come on. They're enamored with the imagination, the pomp, the circumstance, the crown, the jewels, the uh, in a kingdom far, far away. That's what people are enamored over. Because if you look at the fruit, you would have a whole different perspective. Brother Andrew telling the truth all up in YouTube. So people are enamored. But look at the fruit. Look at the history and look at the fruit. And dig a little deeper, why don't you? Because people who... Uh, oh, 
It's awful. I'm like, listen, Jezebel was a queen too, so, and she was wicked. Straight wicked. And not only that, the thing that that Ben had me so was how she treat how, how she treat her family, how she treat how how she treat her people. Listen, how you treat your own family it tells a lot about the fruit in your life. Okay, who on here that that says this, that they say the same? Because I'm telling you, I mean, my son he grown. My son grown, living on his own. But if I hear, if I catch wind at how he treating this girl, they going to have to call the police on me. Because I would have, listen, I would have whipped Charles tail a long time ago for how he did Diana. And what did she do? Absolutely nothing. So that told me a whole lot. I'm like, you know what? You don't even, you know, uh-uh, you ain't straight. You are not straight. Because you ain't batting for the right people. And I ain't here to talk about her, but it just makes me feel some kind of way. I'm like, you don't bat for your family. Because I know, I know if she had made a royal decree, an announcement, and told all the, the media folks to back up off of her family, they would have did that. They would have did it if she had stood up and said, leave my family alone. Mind your business and leave my family alone. Then I would have dealt with Charles. Then I would have dealt with all them people that came after Meghan Markle and dealt with all them people that come after them. She, uh-uh, no, 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 listen, honey, everything that glitters ain't gold. I ain't, I ain't impressed with your diamonds and, and your, your royalty and people, all that marching and all that foolishness. God knows the heart. Do you hear me? God knows the heart. And how you treat your own family tells a lot about your heart. And I said, oh, no, mm -mm, she ain't cool. Nope. Because she could have she could have made I don't know how many decrees. Leave my family the bleepity bleepity bleep alone. And they would have did it. Or if you mess with my family, you're going to have to deal with me. Because I'm at the point now. Let me catch wind of my boy doing something to his sweet girl. You grown, but I will drive to your house and I will jump on you. That's how serious I am about protecting women also. You're not a protector of women. All right, Lacey, focus and come down off of that. All right, let me tell you about this mountain of celebration. The mountain of celebration is controlled by the Hittites. The enemy on the mountain of celebration is called the Hittites. The Hittites represent compromise. Jezebel spirits are determined to get you to compromise. Jezebelic spirits attempt to get you to compromise just a little bit. And it compromised through subliminal messaging. It compromised through this constant tape playing over and over and over again, just like they're doing with this new hyper-sexual revolution that's going on. No, this new hyper-sexual demonic domination that is attempting to be brought into the earth concerning our children. Jezebel hates children. Jezebel hates children. So the mountain of celebration, the enemy on the mountain is the Habite. It represents compromise. The principality on the mountain is Jezebel. Jezebel is the queen of seduction. She's the queen of seduction. The dispelling authority, the thing, the person, the power through the Holy Spirit that would throw Jezebel down is the prophet. Jezebel hates children and Jezebel hates true prophetic voices. Good morning, everybody watching the fire. 
Jezebel hates children and hates true prophetic voices. Listen, it says basic mission, the basic mission of the spirit of Jezebel. Good morning, Miss Sheila, is model the greater creative arts of God and prophecy through them. So what Jezebel does is it compromises the arts and entertainment. So in other in other uh, books, you will see the mountain of celebration, also known as the mountain of arts and entertainment. And what is dominating in arts and entertainment under the lie of free speech? Free speech in expression. And so you have people twerking on the devil. You have people in music videos simulating drinking blood and being on the cross with thorns in head on the guise of free speech and expression, freedom of expression. I have the freedom to express my way, myself, however I choose. And this is it. The reason why Jezebel rain is raining has the appearance of raining is because there is a Jezebel spirit in government at the top because what's on the top would you would you finish the sentence what's on the top what's on the head I'm waiting, I'm waiting for a sentence completion. What's on the head flows down into the body. What's on the head flows down into the body. What's on the head flows down onto the body. What's on the head flows down onto the body. What's in the heart of the head flows down onto the body. And while all of the children of God, while all of the righteous people, while all of the people that, that, that has, I don't know, common sense is looking and going, why isn't this illegal? Why isn't this illegal? I, I don't understand. How is it that, that, that 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 in Michigan yesterday there was legislation passed to teach kindergarten sexual education with 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 books. I, 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 I don't understand. How is this? How is this possible? How on earth is this possible? How <laughs> they can't tie their shoes? They can't cross the street by themselves. I don't under because what's on the head flows down to the body. What's allowed on the head is allowed in the body. Okay, now. Let me read and let me start into this surviving a Jezebelic attack, overcoming a Jezebelic attack. I just wanted to give you a little background information on that. Yeah, you're right, Brother Andrew. Sexual education before teaching them about credit, finances, emotional stability. And this is it. The agenda of the enemy he knows all of that. He knows all of that because sex is the only thing that you can do that you will sin against your own self. Let me find that right quick. Okay. 
go over to 1 Corinthians, 1 Corinthians 6 and 18. And man, I can remember years and years ago, the Lord was telling me that the enemy's agenda was to turn their nature on. To turn their to turn their nature on. And before they, they don't have any kind of any type of emotional stability. And for those of us who know that we got involved sexually early, we know how emotionally tormenting it is because the two will become one flesh. It doesn't matter the age. And of course we have the maps the people who are attracted to minors. And we're all wondering, where is the police? Where, where, where are the authorities? Where are the, the people to arrest people? This is, this is child abuse. Who, who, who's supposed to be doing something about this in, in office? Remember, we have, we have righteous people in these mountains. But we won't hear their voices because they don't control the media. Now, let me tell you this right quick. The media mountain, the enemy on top of the media mountain is the Hittite spirit. And it represents bad news. And the principality on the mountain is Apollyon, which is the destroyer. So when you have the mountain of celebration and the mountain of media and you have government and education, all of them colluding together, there's the toxicity that we're dealing with in our educational system, in our media system, in our entertainment system. Every single thing is sexually explicit. All of it is. And then there's no talk about it. I, I don't understand. All right. Let me get to this scripture. Uh, what was it? Uh, 1 Corinthians 6 and 18. All right. 1 Corinthians 6 and 18. I'm going to. Oh, this is good. Oh, my goodness. Let's start at verse number 15. So that's 1 Corinthians 6 and 15. Six and 15. We're going to start there. Now listen to this. 1 Corinthians 6, 15. This is the Amplified Classic, okay? It says, do you not see and know that your bodies are members, bodily parts, of Christ the Messiah. It says, am I therefore to take the parts of Christ and make them a part of a prostitute? Never, never. Listen, listen to this. Or do you not know and realize that when a man joins himself to a prostitute, he becomes one body with her? The two, it is written, shall become one flesh. That's back in Genesis 2 and 24. It does not matter the age. This is dangerous. Listen. But the person who is united to the Lord becomes one spirit with him. Shun, flee, run away from sexual immorality and all sexual looseness, flee from impurity and thought, word, and deed. Any other sin which a man commits is one outside of the body. But he who commits sexual immorality sins against his own body. That's verse number 18. It says, do you not know that your body is the temple, the very sanctuary of the Holy Spirit who lives within you, 
whom you have received as a gift from God, you are not your own. Since you were bought with a price, purchased with the preciousness and paid for, made his own. So then honor God and bring glory to him in your body. Back up to verse number 18. Flee, run, shun from all sexual looseness. Flee from impurity in thought, word, and deed. And this is what they're trying to teach the children, the little babies. Any other sin which a man commits is outside of the body. But he who commits sexual immorality sins against his own body. I believe this is the highest form of self-abuse. And it does not matter the age. Let's go over to 1 Kings 19. Can you say it doesn't matter the age? It don't matter the age. It does not matter how old they are. And the enemy is attempting to flip the switch of their very young, immature, emotionally immature <coughs> sexual nature on. Now, question, would you give the keys to your car to a seven-year-old? Answer the question, would you give the keys to your car to a seven-year-old? That's what they're trying to do. They're trying to give keys to babies. I was I was way, way old when I started to drive and I was terrified for a minute. And like I said, all of us who got involved before marriage, all of us who got involved as teenagers, some of you guys on here, was even abused as young children. No, the emotional torment it is to be sexually active at a young age. Can you raise your hand with me? Come on, raise your hand. Very, very, very few people made it to marriage a virgin. And for those of us who did not, we remember the torment it was to be sexually active as a teenager. Now imagine that kind of pressure and toxicity onto children. Yeah, Brother Andrew. Some of us have been through some horrible things. And some of us who can't even remember. We can't even remember. There are parts of my life I don't remember. So that's quite possible that abuse happened in those years. But the torture and the torment of being one flesh with somebody else you've been physical with. And you didn't know what was going on. And the transference of spirits are still real. And a lot of children are acting out and being very abnormal because of transference of spirits. And because of being told, if you do, if you blah, 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 then I'm going to hurt your family, do this, that, and the other. We just don't understand the secrets that some babies have to keep. Some babies are tormented to keep. Let's go over to this Jezebel overcoming power. Okay, go over to 1 Kings 19. You guys will catch this by the spirit. I do have some nuggets here. So 1 Kings 19. Okay, I'm going to start reading this, okay? 1 Kings 19. Thank you so much for sharing, you guys, sharing your hearts. 
we shame the devil when we keep that stuff out in the light and we say that's me honey oh my goodness and this is it your parents know your parents know your parents knew my mother did my mother knew i knew when my son had entered into that kind of sexual relationship why everything your countenance changed is that true did some of you parents of older kids older adults you knew there was something about them. You, they walked in and you just knew that there was an innocence that was gone. Oh my God. There was an innocence that was gone. And the enemy's trying to do that to five-year-olds. Because, listen, listen, let me tell you why. Because the reason why he's doing this is it because he's trying to get to the lowest denominator and now it's getting to the point here where people will accept that children very young would be okay with being sexually active then the lowest step would be child sacrifice Yep. Full blown Sodom and Gomorrah. Let's get back to sacrificing children. Because now they can choose what gender they want to be. Yep. Come on, Brother Andrew. That brother studying his Bible. It's the same thing going right back to the word of God when they were like, just kill all the children. Let's just let's just get rid of all of them. That was Jezebel. That was in Egypt. That was in Jesus time. Just get rid of all of them. Because Brother Andrew said, because you can kill the king in seed form. Let's get rid of the king. Let's get rid of the children of God. Let's prevent them from even being born. Because if they're not even born, we don't even have to deal with them. Let's read 1 Kings 19. I'm going to read a while. So you just listen and you can go back on YouTube and watch the video. Take notes. Okay, here we go. All right. This was after, this was after Elijah had killed the prophets of Baal, the wicked prophets on Mount Carmel up in verse, uh, up in chapter number 18, the showdown, the holy prophetic showdown, the prophets of Baal, the prophet of God. Okay. So verse number, no, chapter number 19, Ahab told Jezebel all that Elijah had done. And now he had slain all of the prophets of Baal with the sword. Then Jezebel, listen, listen to the strategy. Then Jezebel sent a messenger. Can you say messenger? <laughs> I underline, I highlighted messenger. Jezebel sent a messenger to Elijah saying, so let the gods do with me and more also if I not take your life as the life of one of them by this time tomorrow. It says, then he was a afraid then elijah was afraid and arose and went and went for his life and came to beersheba of judah over 80 miles over 80 miles they didn't have no uber though remember when we read the word of god we have to take our western mind off they didn't have ubers they didn't have cars so he ran or he walked for 80 miles. <laughs> he had a long time to think. Just say, just say, take your Western mind off. Take your Western mind cap off. When we say 80 miles, we're like, oh, 80 miles, no big deal. No, they didn't have an Uber. He didn't call nobody. Come pick him up. 
It don't say he got on a donkey. So brother walked or ran. Okay? Remember that. All right. And came to Beersheba of Judah over 80 miles and out of Jezebel's realm. Out of Jezebel's realm. I'm going to underline that. Says, and left his servant there. Says, but he himself went a day's journey into the wilderness. So not only did they go 80 miles, he left his servant there at Beersheba. Then he went another day. <laughs> he walked another day. Wow. Into the wilderness. Can you say into the wilderness? Say into the wilderness. Line that up. Into the wilderness and came and sat down alone. Uh, came and sat down alone a broom under a broom or juniper tree and asked that he might die he was like you know what lord i'm done let's just yeah i, I don't want to do this no more that's what uh elijah said i don't want to do this anymore so he says it's enough now oh lord Listen, take away my life, for I'm no better than my father's. Say, so Jezebel will make you forget. That's a nugget. That Jezebel spirit will make you forget. You say, Jezebel will make you forget. your victory well, that Jezebel spirit will make you forget your victory he just had won that victory verse number 5 it says as he lay under the broom of juniper tree behold an angel touched him and said arise and eat it says he looked and behold there was a cake baked on coals and a bottle of water at his head says, and he ate and drank and lay down again. It says, the angel of the Lord came a second time and touched him and said, arise and eat, for the journey is too great for you. Can you say strength for the journey? Verse number eight. So he arose and ate and drank and went in the strength of that food 40 days and nights to Horeb, the Mount of God. So he went farther also. Listen, verse number nine. So he went to Horeb. It says, there he came to a cave and lodged in it. And behold, the word of the Lord came to him and said to him, what are you doing here, Elijah? What are you doing here? Verse number 10. He replied. So how many days journey was this? Maybe, maybe 10 days, maybe 12 days. No, no, no. It says 40 days and 40 nights. So you're talking about maybe 50 or 60 days. Total. From verse number three down to verse number 10, maybe about 60 days total. Elijah starts to talk in verse number 10. He replied, I've been very jealous for the Lord of hosts. For Israel, for Israel, for the Israelites have forsaken your covenants, thrown down your altars and killed your prophets with the sword. And I, I only am left Ain't nobody left but me. <laughs> and they seek my life to take it away. He said, oh, there ain't nobody else left but me. Verse number 11. And he said, and God said, go out and stand on the mount before the Lord. And behold, the Lord passed by. And there was a great and strong wind. It says, rent the mountains and broke in pieces the rocks before the Lord. But the Lord wasn't in the wind. 
says that after the wind, an earthquake, but the Lord wasn't in the earthquake. And after the earthquake, a fire, but the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire, a sound of a gentle stillness and a still small voice. When Elijah heard the voice, oh, this is good. I'm just going to circle. When Elijah heard the voice, he wrapped his face in his mantle and went out and stood in the entrance of the cave. And behold, there came a voice to him and said, what are you doing here? My God. Verse number 14, he said, Elijah said, I've been very jealous for the Lord God of hosts because the Israelites have forsaken your covenants, thrown down your altars and slain your prophets with the sword. And I, I only am left and they seek my life to destroy it. Honey, he said the exact, you know what? This is absolutely amazing. Elijah said the exact same thing. He had been rehearsing that thing. He said it in verse number 10. He said it in verse number 10 and he said it in verse number 14. The exact same thing. Verse number 15. And the Lord said to him, go return, return your way to the wilderness of Damascus. And when you arrive, anoint Hazel to be king over Syria and anoint Jehu, the son of Nimshia, to be king over Israel and anoint Elisha, the son of Saphat, of uh, a better, uh, what is it? A bell Maloa to be prophet in your place. It says, and him who escapes the sword of uh, Hazel, Jehu shall slay, and him who escaped the sword of Elijah, of Jehu, Elijah shall, shall slay. Yet I will leave myself 7,000 in Israel, all knee, knees that have not bowed to Baal, and every mouth that has not kissed him. So Elijah left there and found Elisha, son of Saphat. Okay. That's three verses. So let's get to this surviving Jezebel or what it looks like. I call it the Elijah syndrome because this was something very interesting. Now, in all of this discourse, God never did discipline him, scold him, or talk bad about him running from Jezebel. This is the reason why one of the places where you will be attacked the most by a spirit of Jezebel is when you have come out of some type of spiritual victory. Now, Elijah had went through all of this warfare in chapter number 18. So he was physically exhausted. Watch yourself when you're physically exhausted what comes at you. When you are physically exhausted. He was physically and mentally exhausted. And all Jezebel had to do was back 19 and verse number two was sent a messenger. She did not come herself. Did anybody hear that? Is there a delay? She didn't come. She didn't go and talk to Elijah. She sent a messenger. Listen to this over here. Go back over to 19, verse number three. This is the King James Version, okay? 
New King James Version. She sent a messenger to Jezebel. She sent a messenger to Elijah saying that I'm going to do the same thing to you. Verse number three in the New King James Version. And when he saw that, when he saw that, when he saw the imagination is dangerous when it's seated by the demonic. Come on, Holy Ghost. The imagination is dangerous when it's seated by the demonic. She sent a demonic seed by a messenger and he was already spiritually open because of the war that he just gained the victory over. And that demonic seed got into his imagination and he formed a picture that made him afraid. His own imagination is what scared him because he was physically and mentally exhausted after that huge battle. And a word, a seed fueled, a demonic seed fueled his imagination. Wouldn't you say that's what has been happening the last couple of years to see how Jezebel is reigning now? You have seeds, sown, imagination. It's going to be just as bad as that. And it's going to be the winter of death and dismemberment. And it's, if you don't do, if you don't take that, it, it's going to be bad all over again. And everybody looking like, what <laughs> all the children of God are saying the blood got me honey the blood the blood had me all that time why would he stop protecting me all right let's keep going so you're talking about mentally and physically exhausted a demonic seed fueled his imagination that was already open because of the battle in the war and the victory he just gained and he saw with his own imagination why because of the battle he just won and how bloody that battle was so he saw it and he ran he ran he ran Outside of Jezebel's reign. Okay, so verse number three, he was afraid and rose and went for his life. Came to Beersheba over 80 miles outside of Jezebel's reign and left his servant there. You're going to have to take some, excuse me, you're going to have to take some time to get outside of Jezebel's reign. Now, what does that mean? It takes a, It takes some time to pull out of conversations, to pull out of the reign of people. Your mindset is going to have to shift. The Lord told me concerning the overcoming of the Jezebel attack that's happening even right now in my life is getting the right perspective about who the person is that is operating in a Jezebel spirit. I'm going to say that again. You got to get the right perspective. Your perspective has to shift. Let me write my let me write my nugget down. Number 1. Shift your perspective of the person that is operating out of a Jezebel spirit. Okay, number one, shift your perspective. Shift your perspective of the person that's operating out of a Jezebel spirit, and that will get you outside of Jezebel's reign. That's good. Thank you, Holy Spirit. And then I'm just going to put a little side note there. 19 verse 3. 
First Kings 19.3. First Kings 19.3. So you're going to have to shift your perspective about that person. So this particular person isn't a close relative, or even if it is a relative, you have to shift your perspective as far as the authority and the place that they have in your life. Do you hear what I'm saying? As far as the authority and the place that they have in your life. What's the authority? What's the place that they have in your life? Some of us grew up under Jezebelic mothers, okay? Some, uh, all right, some of us has, has Jezebelic mothers. So you're going to have to shift your perspective on the authority and the place of the person in your life so that you can get outside of the Jezebelic reign. So one of the things that really helped me is the Lord telling me that me and my husband were the ones that had the covenant. Okay. Me and my husband we're the ones that have the covenant. Okay. So since we had the covenant together, I don't have a covenant with the person that's operating through a Jezebel spirit. So I'm outside of that reign. Does this make sense? Who do you have the covenant with? Now, some people, unfortunately, have a covenant with a person who is operating out of a Jezebel spirit. And that takes a whole different conversation right there. Okay? But outside of marriage, you have to ask yourself so you can shift your perspective. So what's in that person isn't seeded into you. Just like what happened to Elijah? It seeded into him. Okay. One of the indicators that you are dealing with a Jezebel spirit is when you are taking issues from work home all the time. And it has everything to do with one person. Do you hear me? It has everything to do with one person. That Jezebelic spirit that's dominating in one person. And you at home on the weekend, washing your dishes, minding your business, driving down the car to the grocery store. And you're thinking about that person in your head. And you're like, why am I thinking about this? This is my doggone day off. And I'm sitting here eating ice cream with my kids and I'm rolling over this thing. Yep, you're right, Miss. All of a sudden, bam, you're rolling over this. And she said this, and he said that, and then they did this, and then they did that. Your heart starts palpitating. You start sweating. You start getting nervous, thinking about, uh, for a lot of people, that's what the whole drudgery over Monday is about. It ain't because it's a Monday. It's because you got to go back in and deal with a Jezebelic spirit. All of a sudden. And you're like, wait a minute. I'm sitting here eating popcorn, watching a good funny movie, and bam, you hear it. They said this. They said that. They said this. And they said, and then they going to do. And you're like, oh, my goodness. Stomach's upset. You go to bed thinking about it. Wake up thinking about it. That's Jezebel. That's a Jezebelic attack. You hear me? So getting outside of Jezebel's reign, you have to shift your perspective of the person that is operating through a Jezebel spirit, operating out of a Jezebel spirit. And they don't have to know. They don't have to know. Most of the time, people who are operating out of a Jezebel spirit don't even know it. Because that they call that their general personality. Or they call that, I'm just a flirty person anyway. No, that's a Jezebel spirit. That's a spirit of seduction. That's a seducing spirit. It's Jezebelic. Flirting is Jezebelic. Do you hear me, Linda? Flirting is Jezebelic. Flirting is Jezebelic and it's manipulation. You flirt to manipulate. I don't know who I don't know who I'm talking to. You flirt to manipulate. Ain't nothing cute about flirting. It's Jezebelic and it's demonic. Stop flirting. You do not have to flirt to get your way. You do not have to flirt to get people to notice you. Stop flirting. 
it's demonic, it's seduction, it's Jezebel. Stop shifting your eyes. Stop the little quippy tippy with your voice. Y'all listen, the flirt is on here. The flirt is watching in, in class and afar. You know exactly how to flirt because it's manipulation and it's demonic. You don't have to do any of that to catch anybody's eye. Okay, verse number four. We're going to take this verse by verse, okay? I'm not rushing because uh, this thing is really serious and I'm dealing with it still. But God is teaching me tools to overcome, so I want to share with you. It says, but by himself went a day's journey. So sometimes you have to leave people who don't understand the warfare that you're dealing with alone. That's the end of verse number three. He went outside of Jezebel's realm and he left his servant there. Sometimes you just got to leave them. Sometimes you have to stop talking to them and find you somebody who walks in the spirit speaks in tongues and know how to cast out devils and have a conversation with them. <laughs> Come on. Walk in the spirit, speak in tongues, cast out devil and live an integral life. Catch hold of them and have a conversation so you can get you a prayer push, a prayer partner. Well, it ain't that bad. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Verse number four. But he himself went a day's journey into the wilderness. Sometimes you're going to have to go into the wilderness. What do I mean into the wilderness? Into the wilderness where you pull away from people who don't get it because a lot of people have been manipulated by that same demon and they don't even know it. My apostle, Apostle Maria says, you're going to have to go underground in prayer to get a surface result. Everything you can't talk about to everybody because people who are under the demonic sway of a Jezebel spirit will go back and tell them exactly what you said and will think nothing of it. Why? Because that's just them. Oh, they're just being funny. They're being funny. No, honey, it's a demon. It's not that deep. Oh, yes, it is. When I'm at home frying chicken and I'm thinking about this demonic mess that happened at work. Yes, it is a demon. It, it, it is serious. Why? Because I ain't got no peace. And Jezebel's three modes of operation, write this down. Three modes of operation. Number one, intimidate. Okay. Number two, manipulate. Number three, dominate. Honey, come on. Just no, no boundaries at all. And we've talked about boundaries. People who don't respect your boundaries, don't like your boundaries. You better do a Jezebelic assessment on them. She hates boundaries. It hates boundaries. But just for the sake of teaching, I'm just going to say she. That spirit hates boundaries. Hates it. Don't. And honey, if you really, this, this is the ultimate Jezebel test. You want to know what it is? <laughs> I'm going to tell you the surefire way to get any Jezebel spirit to manifest. Do you want to know what it is? It is a simple word. But it causes Jezebel to scream. Tell them no. No. Because my friend just put in there about boundaries. Brother Andrew about boundaries. Hates to hear the word no. Tell it no. Tell them no. 
can I do? No. And watch for the manifestation. Did you write that down? You got that? Tell them no. Can I do? No, I'm, I'm sorry, no. With no explanation, just tell them no. Ask me how I know that. Because that's when the Jezebel in our business arrived. When we said no. It was made manifest. It was always there. But when we said no. Yeah. Okay. Let me get to a couple more nuggets. So he himself went a day's journey into the wilderness. And he sat down alone under a juniper tree and he asked that he died another indicator of a jezebelic attack self-pity write that down self-pity self-pity concerning a person he he, he he didn't feel he didn't he didn't feel any pity before then it was self-pity concerning a person. Self-pity. Jezebelic attack. Self-pity. Concerning a person. Self-pity that's wrapped around a person. He said, I'm just going to die. Forget about it. Why? Because it is a mentally taxing attack. Remember, Elijah had already went through a spiritual war with the prophets of Baal. So he was spiritually emotionally exhausted. Then he just said, forget it. How many have felt that? Have gotten to a place of self-pity, depression. I might as well not be here. He said, it's enough. He took it a little bit farther. He was being a little melodramatic right here. It's enough. Oh, Lord. Oh, it's enough. <laughs> take my life. Yes, take my life. I know better than my father. Yeah. He poured the drama on then. <laughs> I know I did. I'm I'm talking about me. Just forget it. I don't want to do it anymore. I'm tired. Mentally, emotionally taxing. Verse number five. As he lay there under the juniper tree, behold, an angel touched him. The angel of the Lord touched him and told him to arise and eat. Now, this is the beautiful part. God did not scold him. God wasn't angry at him. The Bible says that we don't have a high priest that cannot be touched by the feelings of our infirmities. He feels and understands what we feel. I did a video yesterday that God cares, but he will not cancel. God cares that we go through physical, mental wars, but he ain't canceling your assignment. I need somebody to understand that this morning. Yes, yeah, you go, hell, high water, all the block. He will not cancel your assignment based on your emotional upheaval. He didn't say anything about that attack. He didn't say anything about what he was dealing with because he understood. And he cared, but he ain't going to cancel. He, he didn't cancel his assignment. 
God was like, you know what? My boy, you've had a hard couple of days. <laughs> you've had a hard three months. You've had a hard three months, Elijah. But I ain't canceling your assignment. Why? Because your assignment is too powerful. His assignment was too great for the kingdom of God. So what happened? An angel came and he gave him some food. Ain't that something? Another thing you're going to have to do to be sustained, to overcome this, you're going to have to eat your word. Okay? You're going to have to eat your word. And Brother Jeff down on YouTube. If any, if anybody's done the canceling, it's been you. Because God ain't canceled you. God hasn't canceled you from your assignment. God hasn't canceled you. Now you might have decided not to walk in it. He gives you that free will right that I ain't gonna do it. I don't want to do it. That's your prerogative. But you're still going to have to give an account even for an assignment that you refuse to fulfill. Honey, this thing is serious. This thing is serious. You, we all are going to have to give an account for the personal assignments that Father has given us that we refuse to fulfill. Because there are people that are assigned to our life. There was a mission that was assigned to Elijah that no matter how pitiful he felt about his own life. At that time, because of the warfare he was going through, God is not going to cancel your assignment. He ain't, he ain't going to cancel your blessings and he ain't going to cancel your assignment. We're the ones that do that. By the words of our mouth and the meditation of our heart. Verse number five. Okay, verse number six. 19 and six. He looked, behold, there was a cake. Bottle of water, bottle of water. He told him to rise up and eat and take a nap. God wants you to rest. When you are under a Jezebelic attack, you're going to have to get yourself somewhere, sit down, eat your word, and rest. Rest from what? Rest understanding your perspective concerning the person that's operating out of a Jezebel spirit, especially if they ain't in your house. I know there's some cases where there is that going on, but right now we're talking about outside of the house and you're going to have to convince yourself, brother Marcel, and get a grip, get a clue, calm down and realize I don't have a covenant with Jezebel. I ain't got no covenant with that Jezebel spirit. And listen, it goes right back to what I taught a couple weeks ago, not taking things personally, because when we take it personally, we suck that poison in. When we take it personally, we accept the demonic seed and it begins to grow and germinate in us. We at home licking on some ice cream on our own ice cream cone, thinking about the demonic stuff that's happening back at work. Then we mad. Here come Monday. Oh, Lord, got to go back in and deal with this Jezebel again. No, because Father is teaching us tactics and tools and how to overcome this Jezebelic spirit. So we walk out with the victory every single time. There's not one time where God wants us to be beat up. <laughs> not one time. God isn't good. He doesn't get the glory when we're beat up. But you're going to get beat, you're gonna get beat up sometimes. It's like the man, you know what? All right, I missed that. All right, God, what is it that I need to do? And he'll give you dreams, tactics, and strategies. All right, let me share a couple of them here. We got about 10 more minutes. I hope y'all taking notes to so go back to YouTube and, and watch this. This is on by Holy Spirit. Remember the three places, the, the three, uh, the mode of operation, M-O. Modus operandi of Jezebel is to intimidate, manipulate, and dominate. She intimidated Elijah with a word, with a seed word sent by a messenger. Um, Jezebel said that uh, she going to do the same thing to you. <laughs> what? 
she gonna do the same thing to you that you just did to all them props about them all. Uh, no, she gonna uh, that the props, you know, it's gonna happen to her. It's gonna happen to you by them all if she don't, you know, kill you and stuff. And that seed got into that brother because he was already spiritually open. Oh boy, ran. And you know what? God never did address that. There's some things that God will not address because he wants to clarify those things. Quit harping on God, wanting him to address some things that he's already settled because he knew the tremendous assignment that was on Elijah's life for an eternal purpose. It wasn't just for what was going on then because remember he called elijah up and elijah still he's still held in glory for the last times and this here is the last time or the last time i almost been beat honey all right so let me share a couple of nuggets here when we come back thursday i'm gonna stay right here and if that goes into next week so be it listen god allowed elijah to rest and recuperate God wants you to rest and recuperate when you are dealing with a Jezebelic spirit. Rest and recuperate so you can get recentered back on the promises of God, back on his word, so you can get recentered in your word and prayer, so you can fast ask God some questions as to what it is you need to do. What is your warfare strategy when you are dealing with a demonic spirit, a high-ranking demonic spirit that is determined to destroy your family, destroy your mind, destroy your business. He wants you to rest and recuperate. Listen, God corrected Elijah, but it wasn't until the end of chapter number 19. And he told him, no, you're not alone. I've reserved 7,000 that haven't bowed their knee to Baal. But he understands our humanity. Honey, you need to take a deep breath and say, God understands my humanity. Oh, God understands our humanity. God did not scold him for running from Jezebel. God understands our humanity. And he didn't scold. He didn't scold Elijah. He told Elijah, I need you to eat. I need you to rest. But then he ended up showing Elijah his power and his authority. He said, all right, cool, cool. It's like just putting in layman terms, cool. Elijah sent you a voice that calls you to run. Let me show you something else. And then that's where verse number 11 and they told elijah to go out and stand on the mountain and then there was a strong wind but god wasn't in the wind god was demonstrating his power over the air that's so good he was demonstrating his power over the air but god wasn't in the air Woo, glory then an earthquake But God wasn't in that. He was demonstrating his power over the earth. He said, and you running from a voice. I need my hands. Where are my clapping hands? And then there was a fire. I believe it was. And, and this is it. We read this, but we don't understand. We don't have capacity to understand the gravity of the demonstration. We just read, guys, and there was a wind. There was an earth. No, these are earth shattering, mind bending examples. It wasn't no little fire. It was like a wildfire. of epic proportion, and God wasn't in that. Why, he was demonstrating his power over fire, and you ran from a voice.
God was trying to demonstrate to him and show him and remind him, Elijah, remember who it was that just helped you, allowed you to defeat the prophets of Baal in, in chapter number 18. God was like, that was me. I did that. We need to be reminded in our own lives, God did that. Can you say, God, did, honey, sometimes you need to remind yourself all that hell, all that high water, all that stuff that you knew was going to take you out. You need to remind yourself, God did that. I ain't do it. I, why? Because I was Elijah sitting under the tree, just wanting my life to be gone. But God did that. After all of that, Listen, but the Lord was in fire. Listen, and after the fire, a sound of a gentle stillness, a still, small voice. Listen, verse number 13, 19 and 13, when Elijah heard the voice. We've got to get ourselves into a place. We've got to rest and recuperate. We have to get a different perspective about the person who operates in this Jezebelic spirit. We have to get ourselves in a place where the sound mindness of God causes us to hear his voice, hear his voice. And when Elijah heard that voice, he wrapped his face with his mantle and he went and stood at the entrance of the cave. Sometimes when your soul is talking loud, you can't hear the voice of God. That's a good word. When your soul is talking, when your mind, your will, and your emotions are spinning because Jezebel got you in a full spin, you can't hear God. Raise your hand if you sure. Raise your hand if you know. Honey, Jezebel will have you spinning, tripping, cussing. And listen. When your soul is spinning, you can't hear. So he had to get Elijah to calm down, eat, take a nap. I need you to relax. Now, let me demonstrate to you true power and true authority. And you ran from a voice. God did not cancel Elijah's assignment because he was under Jezebelic attack. Because God had already pronounced judgment against it. God had already pronounced judgment against that Jezebelic spirit. God has had pronounced judgment. Against. God was going to take care of it all, all along. And he didn't tell Elijah, rise and go and defeat Jezebel. He didn't say that. He said, all right. I still got an assignment for you. Now, listen, this is the last nugget for today. Then we're going to pick up on this on Thursday. OK, now write this down because this is going to be really good. And all of this is personal, personal information. Holy Spirit, me, of course, the word of God. And you're following along in the word of God. This is so and this is all right. Let me just read this. You don't have to lower your standard of righteousness to deal with Jezebel. You do not have to lower your standard of righteousness to deal with Je You do not have to lower your standard of righteousness to deal with Jezebel. You don't have to lower your standard. Take a deep breath. You don't have to lower your standard of righteousness to deal with Jezebel. You don't have to lower your standard of righteousness. You don't have to go back to who you used to be. You don't have to go ghetto or go off to deal with with a Jezebel spirit. Why? Because you've gotten a different perspective. 
God is the only one that can help you shift your perspective about the person who is engaged in in living out of a Jezebelic spirit. Now, what you do is you have to confront, number one, in love when God says so. Because remember, up here, that God didn't cancel Elijah's assignment because he was under Jezebelic attack because God had already pronounced judgment against that Jezebelic spirit. Okay? And you have to get into his presence because what will happen, unfortunately, if there's too much focus on that, you become the thing that you hate. That's why you don't have to lower your standards. That's why God is saying, I don't want you to lower your standards. I heard, I think Ricky Smiley talking about how the word of God was, um, you know, something to, to perpetuate slavery and all of that. And I got to thinking about, because he talked about turning the other cheek. God wants the turn the other cheek scenario so our standard of righteousness isn't lowered. Not so that we can be abused. Understand this. Not so that you can be abused, but so that you stay in right alignment. So that God can execute the plan in you, through you, for you. He said, vengeance is mine. I'll repay. I'll repay. Vengeance belongs to me. So he doesn't want us to be abused. He wants us to be wise, but he don't want us to lower our standard. So God ain't, he ain't talking about you being abused. He's talking about you staying in right alignment. And we don't have to lower our standards for God to deal with people. That's why, that's why Jesus was like, turn the other cheek. This is how many times you forgive. This, give him your cloak too. Why? Because I need you in right alignment, Lacey. Because if you ain't in right alignment, you're going to become the thing you hate. And you ain't going to be able to hear me. And then Jezebel will have an open door and a legal right to operate through you. And you'll be the one, Jezebel. Listen, if you dealing with people and they always talking about narcissism, got people making a whole career off of teaching about narcissism alone. You become the narcissist because you're so afraid of being abused by a narcissist. Then you're all shut off. You all self-focused, hyper self-focused. Then you wonder why you can't keep no friends and don't nobody want to be around you because you're too self-focused. It ain't no joke, but we can overcome. And God is like, I need you in alignment with me. Don't worry about the Jezebelic spirit that's operating through your cousin them. Why? Because you don't have a covenant with them. God told me in this particular situation I'm dealing with, he's like, you got to keep the strife out of your marriage because Jezebel and Leviathan comes after your marriage. The next thing you know, you hearing stuff wrong, he hearing stuff wrong, you're all mad, you turn inward, you become Jezebelic. Now understand, there has to be an Ahab in place, but God is the only one that can deal with Ahab like he did in the word. He didn't tell Elijah to deal with Ahab either. God has a way with concluding things. But we have to conclude and be in alignment with him so he can conclude in righteousness. Our way of conclusion ain't righteousness, honey. But all that other stuff is open door. So all the way through the word, he's like, this is what I need you to do. I need you to walk in love. I need you to operate your life and live out of the fruit of the spirit. Why? So you don't fulfill the lust of the flesh and Jezebel is waiting for the open door called the lust of the flesh to operate through. Walk in the spirit, live in the spirit so you will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. What's the lust of the flesh? I'm gonna get my way and I'm gonna get you told. 
But what's the way of God? Faith works by love. Like, I don't want y'all to love walk. Because if you get out of your love walk, you can't hear me. You're going to be listening to the angel of light and think you're talking to God. A lot of folks are. Christians that don't believe this. Why? Listening to the angel of light. My God expect all that. And God never told us to agree. God never told us to like his word. Well, I don't agree with that. And God is like, we have to agree with him concerning obeying and his word and, and, and the feelings and all that and catch up another time. But we're trying to serve God through our Western perspective. And we can't serve God we cannot serve our Holy Father out of our Western perspective because we're always going to go back to our own understanding if we are. He said, I need you to trust me with all your heart and don't lean to your Western perspective. In all your ways, acknowledge me. God, what do I do? How do I deal with this person? What is it that I'm supposed to say? Most of the time, Father will tell you, hold your peace and let me fight this battle. Because he's about throwing that spirit of Jezebel down, casting it out. How that going to happen, Lord? Be quiet. You stay in right alignment with me. Confront when I tell you to stand your ground. Come on, Brother Andrew. Ain't that a word for the century? We can't serve God out of our Western perspective. This is the perspective right here. This. This is the perspective. How do I get free? Right here. How do I stay free? Right here. <laughs> How do I deal with Jezebel? Right here. <laughs> Last nugget. God has vengeance already to deal with that spirit. God has vengeance already. He already has a plan in place to deal with that demonic spirit. And he does not need our Western perspective to do it, but he needs our agreement in prayer and fasting, honey, call a fast. Keep your lips off of the person. Deal with that spirit. And what I did tell, what I did say, I said, you don't see you. I was talking to that demon. And remember, glory be to God. Demons know when you know who you are. That's going to have to be my last nugget. Demons know when you know who you are. So, oh, I see you. I see you. I see you. Why? God has given me a different perspective. God, like, you ain't got no covenant with them. You got a covenant with your husband. You better keep the strife out your marriage. Keep the strife out your house because it's going to mess with your mind and your money and your family structure. Then you'll be arguing about people that have no, that you have no. And you'll be arguing about people you ain't got no covenant with. What kind of mess is that? Demons know when you know who you are. I got so many other things I want to share. So many, but then I might have to wait until Thursday to do that. This was a teaching moment. Go back to YouTube, watch it on YouTube, take your notes. I don't have handouts for it. I didn't really feel a Holy Spirit unction for a handout because it's time for us to catch some things by the Spirit. Thank you, brother Marcel, my nephew in the spirit. And I know you did. I know you deal with a lot of different spirits. And all of us do. So no, no. Pray in the spirit. You ain't got to be all loud and demonstrative. But I tell you what. You can be. Why are you doing that? So I don't cuss. <laughs> 
No, but for real. And get the strategy of God. And don't take anything personally. But Jezebel goes after you personally so you can. Oh, man. I got my other notes up here. I, I got to stop, though, because I can go on in. And remember, modus operandum. I want to intimidate you. I want to manipulate you. And I want to dominate you. And if that demon can't do that, it will do it to the person that you are closest to to begin to see into them a wrong perspective of you. And they got you inspecting yourself like you all out of order. You know, when you, <laughs> all right, I'm trying to be done. But you know, when you out and about and you smell red onions on somebody's body. And you have to inspect yourself. Wait a minute. Is that me? <laughs> Am I the issue? How many of you ever done that? Am I the issue? Because I smell red onions and I ain't in no kitchen. Got me looking at myself all funny. But that's because of that spirit's demonic seed sown into somebody else. All right, let me share this one more thing, okay? I, I'm trying to be done, but I got to get this one out. Okay. One of the tactics of the Jezebel spirit and how it will intimidate you, it will intimidate you with your own confidence. Now, the reason why it comes to intimidate you with your own confidence is so that you back down. It don't take all of that. We can just relax. And then you like. <laughs> so am I? Am I wrong for working? Am I wrong for being passionate? Because of a lack of their confidence in themselves, your confidence intimidates them. And so they intimidate you back because your confidence intimidates them. So you're wrong for being confident. Or something is wrong or out of order with you being confident. Did that make sense to you? I just need one somebody to say yes, that make that makes sense. I see Brother Andrew on uh YouTube. This is some of the things that they say. I don't know how you do all of that. How do you do all of that? I don't understand. Come on, Brother Marcel. How do you do all of that? And you're like, I love what I do. I mean, so much though. Wow. And you're like, Remember when you're under attack, you'd be like, is that too much? Am I too much? Am I doing too much? Attack. I don't, I don't want to intimidate anybody. I'm just, I'm just being who I it's an attack, Lacey. <gasps> Wait a minute. Let me tell you this and I'm going to hang up. Do not demote yourself to make somebody else feel better about their laziness. I'm going to say that again. Don't stop doing what you do to make other people comfortable in their laziness. Jezebel is very lazy. Jezebel is a lazy spirit. That's why it tries to intimidate, manipulate, and dominate over in 1 Kings 19, Jezebel sent somebody. Jezebel sent a messenger. If she was so bad, she would have got her tail up and went. <laughs> she would have got her tail up and went and told Elijah. She didn't do that. She sent somebody. About all enamored about the queen. What? <laughs> Don't demote yourself. 
Don't belittle yourself to make somebody else feel good in their laziness. All of that? I mean, why does it, why do you have to do all of that? Because I'm passionate. You don't have to explain, but I'm telling me I'm passionate. I love what I do. And I ain't got to explain it to you. And I'm not going to explain it to you. I could say a lot more. I got a bunch more notes, but I'm going to come back on Thursday morning. So God, I thank you. I thank you for this teaching. It's 745. We went 15 minutes longer. But God, I thank you for this teaching. God, thank you that you're giving us strategies and tools and techniques and teaching us how to deal with a Jezebelic attack. Because we shouldn't have to walk around on eggshells around nobody. If you are at work or if you anywhere at your mom and damn house or anywhere and you have to tiptoe around people, there's a Jezebel in that room. And then on the flip side, if you're in the room and everybody got to tiptoe around you because they're afraid of making you mad, then you the Jezebel in the room. Yeah, I said what I said, Linda. <laughs> everybody got tiptoe around you. They scared of making you mad. You want everything your way, dictating and dominating in everybody else's life. You the Jezebel in the room. And we're going to deal with that too. That, this might go on into next week, but we're going to keep right on going with it. Because we got to get some victory over and, and I want to continue to get the victory over this very dangerous demonic spirit. And remembering, I need to keep this up front in my in my eyesight is not to take anything personally. But that is the number one strategy. Let me get in your business and make this personal. Because if I can make this personal, I will pull you out of your seated position in Christ Jesus. And you will come down and you will try to start fighting this Jezebelic spirit in the flesh. And we will never win in the flesh. Our victory comes when we stay in the spirit, stay submitted, stay obedient to God. Okay? Okay, so with that, Lord, I thank you for the students. I thank you for this teaching and this lesson. I thank you for the strategies you're teaching us how to war and our fingers to fight. God, help us to stay focused on you as we're pressing into this day. Because, oh, trust me, oh, you're going to be confronted. Why? Because a seed of righteousness has been sown and seeds have to be tested. Okay, so when you get the test, Take a deep breath and say, okay, God, how do I deal with this? And I thank you, God, for the continuation of this teaching that's going to happen according to your will. Thank you for all the nuggets and notes. Thank you for the wisdom that's even bursting forth in my brothers and my sister right now in Jesus name. And we just decree and declare that Jezebel is being thrown down in all of our lives right now in the name of Jesus. And we will walk in right relationship with you, in right relationship with our brothers and our sisters. And we will keep Jezebel, Leviathan, and Python out of our relationships, out of our minds, and out of of our sphere, out of our homes, in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, everybody, I will see you again on Thursday. This has been so wonderful and so exciting. I have more nuggets to share. Let me know how this impacted you. You can inbox me or you can email me. Uh, email me. That's what my team has been saying that's better. Email me at my website. It's all on my link tree. And you guys have a wonderful day, okay? What time? Thursday, 6 a.m. Same time, 6 a.m. Eastern time. I'll be here, okay? All right. You guys have a wonderful day. Be vigilant. And you can overcome, okay? All righty. Bye-bye, everybody.